If you've ever heard the term living fossil, well, you've been lied to. While there is no agreed upon definition, a living fossil in my eyes is a species that has remained superficially similar to its ancient ancestors over a very long period of time, but this is difficult to apply. This term incorrectly implies that species today are identical to their ancestors just because of a similar appearance. What really matters is how different their genetic code is, as every organism accumulates dozens to hundreds of new mutations throughout their lifetime, including us. But if we were to use the term to describe an animal off of looks, this fella fits the bill. On today's episode of Endangered Inhabitants, we'll be trawling into the world of Macrochelis temniki, that western alligator snapping turtle. All turtles are found in the vertebrate class of Reptilia. The first proto-turtles first appeared in the Middle Triassic around 210 million years ago, with genre-like Proganochelis giving us a glimpse into what the earliest turtles looked like. While being referred to as proto-turtles, by me, Proganochelis and animals like it aren't true turtles taxonomically, being found outside the order containing all modern turtles in the clade Testudinata. All extant turtles and tortoises are found in the order Testudines, with the earliest members first appearing during the late Jurassic around 160 million years ago. All modern species can be divided into two suborders, the Pleuridera containing the side neck turtles and the Cryptodira containing the hidden neck turtles, including our snapper. As you hopefully guessed from the name, the main difference is how the neck is retracted for protection with members of Cryptodira retracting their necks backwards while Pleurodira retract their necks sideways. Alligator snapping turtles themselves fall under the superfamily Calidroidea in the family Calidridae along with the other species of snapping turtles. This family first appeared at the end of the late Cretaceous, around 70 million years ago, with their evolutionary history focused in the Americas, but with some fossilized species being found in Eurasia. There are currently two extant genres of snapping turtles, Calidra containing three species of common snapping turtle, and Macrochelis containing two species of alligator snapping turtle. Until relatively recently, there was only one extant species found in Macrochelis, that being Macrochelis temminkii. This remained the case until 2014, when Macrochelis suaniensis, or the Suwani snapping turtle, was officially recognized as its own species. It was found that significant genetic divergence between the two species had occurred, dating back to the late Miocene to early Pliocene, about 13.4 to 5.5 million years ago. To put that into perspective, this means that these two species could be more genetically distinct than humans are to chimpanzees, as we diverged approximately 5 to 7 million years ago. So reflecting this change, the species we're covering today will hence be known on this channel as the Western Alligator Snapping Turtle. Help me make this a more widespread change if you're a real turtle fan like me. These turtles are absolutely gigantic, being some of the largest freshwater turtles, along with a couple of giant softshell turtles in Asia. Adults typically have a carapace length between 35 to 81 centimeters, or 14 to 32 inches, while weighing anywhere from 8 to 80 kilograms, or 19 to 176 pounds. While most specimens don't grow that large, it should be noted that these turtles continue to grow throughout their lives. Speaking of which, these fellas live between 10 to 45 years in the wild, but captive individuals can live up to 70 or more years old. When one looks at the two types of snapping turtle next to each other, there are several differences you can use in order to tell the two apart. Alligator snappers have a larger head, shorter neck, larger mouth, more hooked beak, spiny shell, rougher skin, larger body, and are slower moving compared to the common snapping turtle which is more streamlined, has faster reflexes, and has forward facing eyes. To get this out of the way, turtles cannot be removed from their shells and live. The shell is created through a fusion of modified ribs, vertebrae, and shoulder girdle bones, meaning that ripping the turtle out of there is going to be way messier than the cartoons made it out to be. The shell is composed of two main sections, the dorsal or top section, called the carapace, and the ventral or bottom section, called the plastron. These sections themselves are composed of scutes, a bony external plate or scale overlaid with horn, and underlying bony plates. The scutes and plates then overlap one another to provide the shell with increased structural integrity. 
On top of this, these fellas have an extra thick, with a K, shell with three dorsal ridges and large scales, making it look like a dragon. In order to get from place to place, these turtles possess muscular legs with long and strong claws that enable them to climb over logs and dig into deep, loose sand or gravel on the river bottom, being able to move against the current with ease. These claws also help females climb up steep riverbanks and excavate a chamber to lay their eggs. As they need to get the jump on their prey, these guys are built for ambush predation. They have a deep brown color, perfect camouflage for the stained water they often inhabit. As sedentary animals that don't move much, like y'all, they can often grow carpets of algae on their skin that only helps in hiding them from prey. They also have pointed fleshy projections around their eyes on the sides of their head to really sell the act of being an algae-covered rock to any would-be passerby. These turtles are the first real Americans covered in this series, being endemic to the southeastern United States. They are mostly found in bodies of water that drain into the Gulf of Mexico. Chief among them is the Greater Mississippi River Watershed. They can be found in northwestern Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, Kentucky, Louisiana, Arkansas, Illinois, Iowa, Missouri, Oklahoma, and Texas. Unlike common snapping turtles that prefer still water like isolated wetlands and ponds, western alligator snapping turtles prefer flowing bodies of water like rivers, creeks, spring runs, bayous, oxbows, river swamps, and reservoirs. As ambush predators, they prefer for food to be brought to them by the current rather than getting out of the comfy sediment. They prefer places with canopy cover like overhanging trees, shrubs, dead submerged trees, and even beaver dens when present to better conceal themselves from prey. Western alligator snapping turtles are opportunistic feeders that are mostly carnivorous, relying on both catching live food and scavenging dead bodies. Their diet consists primarily of fish, mollusks, carrion, and amphibians, but they are also known to munch on snakes, snails, worms, crayfish, insects, waterbirds, aquatic plants, other turtles, and even small alligators when present. These turtles are ambush predators. Unlike their smaller cousins that are more pursuit predators, this turtle hunts by lying motionless like a big rock waiting for unsuspecting prey to approach a little too closely. They also have a secret weapon a built-in vermiform or worm-shaped appendage on the tip of the tongue used to lure prey. This is a form of aggressive mimicry, where predators share similar signals that allow them to avoid being correctly identified by their prey or host. When prey is either unlucky or stupid enough to take the bait, the turtle can put one of its defining characteristics to use, that giant head. That massive maw is able to snap shut at speeds of almost 320 kilometers an hour, or 200 miles per hour, powered by powerful jaw muscles. This produces a bite of about 1,000 pounds per square inch, or PSI. To put that into perspective, that's what some higher-end pressure washers or industrial hydraulic systems use in terms of pressure, being about 100 times more powerful than the strongest human bite. If you're thinking to yourself, that's a bit excessive, you need to consider that predators do not hunt for fun. They hunt to survive. Predatory animals need to efficiently kill their prey as quickly as possible so it can't fight back or get away. Having the most powerful bite of any turtle sure can help in that endeavor. These turtles are seemingly more nocturnal, when they may traverse through their home range actively feeding and scavenging. They can be active during the day, however. They spend most of their time underwater, being able to stay submerged for 40 to 50 minutes at a time before needing to come up for air, allowing them to stay still while hunting. They rarely leave the water, only doing so to lay eggs or if displaced by flooding. These turtles make incels look like social butterflies, being extremely solitary by nature. Each turtle has its own home range, averaging just under 0.8 kilometers or 0.5 miles. These ranges typically use a submerged object, like a large log, to define the core of their range. Any interloping rivals found in their range are met with aggression, which may lead to fights that include posturing, snapping, and pushing each other. Western alligator snappers typically breed in the spring, traveling into different sections of their body of water in hopes of finding a mate. If multiple males are present, they will compete and may even fight it out for the right to mate. 
When a winner is established, the nasty can commence, which is just as awkward as you'd expect from turtles underwater. Once the nasty is completed, the males bugger off back to their own territories. Females will travel inland to dig nests in the sand about two months after mating, normally about 50 meters or 165 feet from the water. Females generally lay one clutch per year, with clutch size ranging from 10 to 60 eggs. Digging the nest is the most parental care these little turtles get, as the females will then return to the water and leave them to fend for themselves. Assuming the nest isn't raided or disturbed, the eggs take around 100 to 140 days to incubate, with the incubation temperature determining the sex of the hatchlings. Temperatures of 29 to 30 degrees Celsius or 84 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit will yield females, and temperatures of 25 to 27 degrees Celsius or 77 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit primarily produce males. After the incubation period is completed, the turtles hatch and start to dig their way out of the burrow their eggs were laid in. They then book it straight for the water, where they act as miniature versions of their adult selves. The only time any animal would have the gall to predate alligator snapping turtles are when the turtles are young. Adults are practically immune from predation. Nests are commonly raided by various birds and mammals, while the largest predator in many parts of their range is the North American river otter when the turtles are young. The Western Alligator Snapping Turtle is listed as vulnerable on the IUCN Red List. No official estimates are given for their population, with an unspecified population trend, but their population seems to be declining, already being extirpated from many parts of their former range. It is also listed as a Sites Appendix 2 species, meaning international trade is regulated by the Sites Permit System. The biggest threat that Western Alligator Snapping Turtles face is over-harvesting and poaching. While it is illegal to take alligator snappers in many states, other states, like Louisiana, allow residents to catch one per day for personal use. This is often done using trot lines, noodle lines, limb lines, nets, or bows. This combines with the turtle's low breeding rates to send the population into a nosedive. On top of that, multiple types of pollution pose a massive threat. Entanglement in fishing gear targeting other species is common for many aquatic turtles. The ingestion of fishing hooks are especially dangerous for our species. Runoff from agricultural and urban areas also increases pollution in waterways. Speaking of waterways, these turtles live mainly in the Mississippi and its tributaries, meaning these guys are threatened by habitat destruction and degradation. This includes waterway channelization and alteration, riparian habitat destruction, and damming. The climate crisis and unsustainable development are compounding the threats facing everything living on and in the Mississippi, including the communities that call it home. As these turtles need areas for nesting, any large continuous change to their habitat can pose problems to their continued success in the region. These turtles are extremely important as one of the main predators and scavengers in the regions they inhabit, both helping to control the populations of their main prey species and helping to keep their home range clean by feeding on any carrion they find. They've already been here for millions of years. Let's make sure they stay for millions more. I would like to thank each and every one of you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. Make sure you hit like, subscribe, and leave a comment with any thoughts or queries down below if you enjoyed this garbage. I've been so burnt out. Hopefully the quality hasn't decreased, but this was a slog to get through. Especially the writing. I've lost that fire I had a couple months ago when this was my primary activity before getting the new job I just got, with barely anything to show for it. I'm always most productive with my various passions whenever they shouldn't be my main focus. So hopefully I can get it together and actually work towards something once again with this, or else I won't even get into detail with what'll happen. It might take a while, but you'll know when inspiration hits. Or I'll go missing and never be heard from again, probably being dead in a ditch. Both outcomes are fine by me. I want to set the goal of reaching 500 subscribers by the end of the year. Let me know in the comments if I'm insane or not for that. Sorry if this conclusion is so long. I've had a lot on my mind in the last month. Everyone have a great day. Peace.